world gone mad. Checking in with Kate, Amanda, and me, Racy. This is Don't Be Extra. Your description is advised. Mic drop. Hello. So Kate and I have decided in the middle of this coronavirus that we would come to you guys and just kind of talk to you guys um, about everything else that's going on in the world. Um, today we are starting with Netflix um, movies to watch while you are in the house. Did we also include other avenues or were we just strictly sticking to Netflix today? I also have some Prime Video. Oh, snap. So Prime Video. If anyone's got Prime, yeah. Yes, and I also have Hulu, so that's why I was like, I just wanted to make sure. But we have our list, and we're ready to go. So, um, and yes, please don't mind the, yeah, we'll talk about that later, too. Wonderful artwork, yeah. yeah we'll we talk are. all yeah. about that later. But yeah, so, <laughs> um, Kate, do you want to start, or do you want me to start? What do you want to do? Um, I'll go ahead also, and I'll start first. Yeah, we're not extra at all, y'all. Also, um, coronavirus, that's my dog. Like, it is yeah. what it is. Like, this is just life. I mean. Everyone is, is living the home life right now. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. The dining room is my office. So, yeah. this is what happens <laughs> when this is your office. Right. Um, so, go ahead, Kate. Take it away. Okay. So, for Netflix, I started off and divided it into some categories. And I started with hot mess drama, hashtag guilty pleasure. Um, one of my favorites is Dr. Foster. If you've never seen it before, it is definitely the high point of drama. Uh, basically, a doctor suspects that her, like, ne'er-do-well loser husband is having an affair and begins to investigate. Um, the best thing about this is that it doesn't take more than a single episode to find out the truth, and that's when, like, the real drama begins. Uh, my favorite episode is the season one finale, which is basically a dinner party. So amazing. Uh, Two seasons, 10 episodes, they're just under an hour an episode. Uh, the Tudors, which is actually on um, Netflix right now, but it comes from Showtime, it had four seasons, and they're just under an hour an episode. Uh, the story of Henry VIII and his wives comes to life, beautiful actors, jewelry, locations. Um, of course, it's not accurate at all, but um, it's not modest either, by the way. Content warnings, uh, it's extremely watchable and bingeable. The only suggestion I have, if you are going to watch it, is that as soon as Katherine Howard loses her head in the middle of season four, just stop watching. You're not, you're, you're not going to do yourself any favors to watch until the end of the season. So the best part by far is uh, King Henry, um, Reese Myers, or Jonathan Reese Myers, I'm sorry, and Natalie Dormer as the doomed Anne Boleyn, definitely the best part. So the next part is um, my documentary list. Uh, back in the day, uh, Wild Wild Country, if you have not watched it, I know that- That is so ass. on my list. Wild Good. Wild Country is like, I think we, did we watch it like, not together, but like at the same time, like we watched it kind of like at the I same time. So. And we were I both like, because so. yeah, because remember we both had that moment of like, how did we not know that this really happened? And then also exactly. it was like that moment where your parents were like, living and like had no <laughs> my parents never said i was like do you remember this like do you remember this whole thing happening because it does literally like span the globe as far as global world events world news was covering it and my Dude. parents were like i don't know what you're talking about it's like yeah wow our country is definitely crazy like i oh definitely recommend because it's definitely on my list i definitely recommend y'all watching that because wow our country is crazy yes. it's crazy yeah, it, it basically it's unbelievable how everything actually transpires for that. But um, for people that haven't seen it, um, it's based on the true story of what happens when an Indian guru named Osho creates a commune or a sex cult for his followers called the, um, it's Ranish Param, and it clashes with the community of Wasco County, Oregon, um, between like 1981, 1988. And it's just a beautiful musical score, I'll say, and it's like very well done, so it's very watchable. So you can just binge that. like And it can happen in real life. That's yeah. what you need to pay attention to. Because that happened in real life and it can happen again. I'm just, yes. I'm oh just, my God, absolutely. And the fact that they, it's just great. It's a great, it's great. Just watch it. Watch it. Just watch that. Watch it. Yeah. So if you're looking for like a movie though, for like one night, you just want to sit down and watch something. Um, the 7-5 was actually a documentary done by HBO. And it's an hour and 43 minutes, just under like two hours. Um, it was basically the 75th precinct in Brooklyn, New York in the 1980s. Um, it's the corruption. It's told through the connections to police officers and this, like, one drug dealer 
or a drug dealer, Michael Dowd, who was also a cop and a drug dealer. Um, he actually ended up serving like 12 and a half years in prison for his crimes and offenses. Um, it's impossible basically to separate who is good and who is bad as you're watching this. And um, the best part, Adam Diaz is the Dominican gang leader and he is basically just being interviewed and you know that he's like a drug kingpin and he's like both missing and like strangely likable. So if you wow. like New York, if you like any kind of like police corruption, definitely the way to go. So the next one, you and I definitely watched together, and uh, it is another one that came through, and, like, everyone seemed to watch it, but Fire, the greatest party that never happened. Do you remember watching this? Fire Fest 2.0? Yeah. What do we call it? What do we... Um, it was, like, uh, what do Fire we call Fest Fire 2. in the Water? No, we yeah, call it Fire in the, fire in the water. water because of our local um, something in the water. Event. Yes, yeah, because it was just starting to be like so crazy to pull that all together. But whereas that one actually succeeded, this one clearly did not. So um, the one thing I will say is that you will never look at Evie on water the same way again. If you see anyone drinking, you will an Evian bottle. You'll be like, what the hell? But yeah, because anyway, Homeboy um, did some crazy stuff for that water. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Sorry. This, almost. Well, it's okay. Almost. 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 Yeah. Almost. You didn't have to go through almost the craziest thing. Yeah. Also, I just got an idea. So we don't stay on track about anything anyways, because we're not extra here. Ain't no rules. We just whatever, whatever. But I think that we should do, and you guys can comment below or let us know if you want to see this. Kate loves movies. Like movies are like Kate's thing. Like movies, TV shows, documentaries, yeah. anything about killing people, any of those oh, yeah. mysteries, that's all her thing. Oh, that's the next, honestly, one. the next one. Well, my next like category is called crime movies. Yes, I honestly think that we should do a, um, we should do like a segment where we just review like TV shows and movies, and like yes. we put out a disclaimer of like if you haven't seen it, don't watch this. Don't listen. But because we have some good commentary too when it comes to like some stuff. So the only reason why I say that, guys, is because Fire Festival was amazing but i think we made it even more amazing just because of the commentary that we added to it from talking to each other like it was just everything it, was everything. it is it's something that's like better viewed with other people and like their comments kind of like mystery science theater 3000 but just like tiger king which is getting its own its own coronavirus episode 100 percent. meme worthy series are the best ones to watch so yes it's really the only reason why we watched it honestly pretty much because it was like what's this about like you know like it was like the fomo it was the fomo of missing out from all of the memes it was like what is it like yeah you don't want to be like the last person to find out what a meme actually means like that is like the epitome of like you're failing at life so yeah the funniest part for this whole thing amanda was my father who is not like hooked into like social media or anything like that was all over this at the time when like when the news was going down to the caribbean and they were like filming and you know trying to do it or not the caribbean i'm sorry it was in um the was it the bahamas no somewhere in the bahamas somewhere yeah i think it was anyway yeah so like when he was actually uh he was watching the news and like he was like so wrapped up in it because like they were you know doing all this like that and i will never forget i was just like on the sofa he was like acting all super extra and i was just like so, like, my dad, who is not, like, involved in social media, he's not involved in, like, what's hot right now, he was all over this at the time. So, I just feel like I had to put that out there as, like, you know, good job, dad. It's really good. No. It really is. It really is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, the one last one is kind of a newer one than since that, but it was um, The Legend of Cocaine Island. Oh, and, um, you take all the good ones! I know, I know. I know. <laughs> So the best way I can describe this is like, if you can remember when you were a kid and you thought buried treasure was cool, but now imagine you're an adult, you're flat broke, and you hear about buried treasure on an exotic island in the Caribbean, but the treasure is actually 70 pounds of cocaine. So it's like, would you go dig it up? I mean, like this one guy claims that he did. So it's actually more of a comedic a documentary as far as that goes they take a very lighthearted approach to a very serious issue um best thing hands down is andy who's one of the guys that is actually a character in the show and he's a real person but he's a character and uh basically yeah just just watch that you won't 
figure out how it's going to end. But yeah, so that one was, that one was good. Was that on your list too? Dude, yes. Also, also like, again, that's one of the other ones that we need to like review because Oh, so much. You, you just cannot, you can't like put into words like how crazy some of this stuff is because it's like, also in my mind, I think about it from the perspective of like, if me and Kate did this, right? Like, <laughs> exactly. yeah. we would do it way different, first of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, if we ever got to the point that we were like, we're going to go to another country yes. and we're going to dig this up to make money. What's one of the first things we would have? A shovel. A shovel. <laughs> also, also, we would know not to get involved with people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rule number one, like that didn't make sense. <laughs> so, um, yes. Okay, get to your crime stuff because I know you got a lot. And I'm going to write them down because I probably haven't seen them either. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, um, the crime movies that I had are, like I said, they're movies. They're not actually series that you have to watch. So, um, <laughs> One of them is, um, it's an original, I believe, from uh, Netflix. It's called Shimmer Lake. Um, it's basically told um, going back further and further in, in time. And it's basically like showing you like what happened um, as far as like a bank robbery in a small town. Um, it's pretty twisty. It's really excellent storytelling. It's a great ride from the beginning to the end. Um, Ron Livingston and Rob Corddry star as like FBI agents who are kind of like comic relief. Um, you, you told know, me about this one. Yeah, and it's, yes. like, it's it's catchy because I mean I think it won a couple of awards for the screen the screenplay of it, but uh, no, it is it's funny, but it's like it's interesting the way it's told. The acting is like right on, and it's just kind of like if you like a, um, without like I guess like the intensity, it's almost like uh, the usual suspects. It's kind of yeah. along those lines. So you're not gonna you're not gonna really see what's coming until you, until it happens. So that yeah, happen. that was a good one. I remember you telling me about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so. A new one that's out right now is called Lost Girls, and it's about an hour and a half. Um, I only watched it because I actually saw the killing season on the Prime Video um, uh, series last fall, um, where they examined uh, the Lisk, which is the Long Island serial killer, like Amanda said. I I'm into all that. But um, the killing season is actually, um, you know, this other series that basically covered that as far as the serial killer goes. And the movie... Um, Lost Girls is based off the book Lost Girls, an Unsolved American Murder Mystery. And although it's not a documentary, it's kind of framed to be in the perspective of one of the mothers of one of the girls who goes missing. And what happens when they're looking for her is they start to uncover the bodies of several women on Gilgo Beach and Oak Beach in Suffolk County, New York. It's based off a true story that's still unsolved. So for me, that one's, that one's kind of cool. It has like a more human element into it. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of questions about like the way that the the police handled it and different things like that, but it's it's definitely good. If you like true crime, you'll love that one. So that one's good. And then okay, the next one is an older movie, which is more recently on Netflix now called Molly's Game. It's like two and a half hours, so it is longer. But uh, this is a biographical film um, start telling the story of Molly Bloom. Um, she actually starts off with her at the Olympics. She was an Olympic hopeful in 2002 at the Winter Olympics, and she was dealt a career-ending injury. So basically, she, you know, rather than going to law school, she put it off. She moved to California, and she starts along the way to build an underground poker empire in her uh. mid-20s. Like, this chick, like, she was worth, like, I think it was a couple hundred million dollars by the time this all went down. But uh, basically, the FBI gets involved, and it's like, again you're seeing her with her lawyer who is played by um, Idris Elba and Molly is played by Jessica Chastain. And Jessica Chastain is flawless in this movie, but their chemistry is the best part of the whole movie. And it's, it's another good one. So I like that one. So, um, just to wrap it up. So I know the next one I, I stole from you. So I don't know if you want to talk about it or not, but oh my God, people, I implore you. If you have not watched The Office, it is on Netflix only until 2021. So you have the rest of this year to watch it. Listen, if it anybody just made it through this whole video and they've never seen the office, start with that one. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, so great. If you've worked in an office, if you've worked with a human, if you know a human, there is some way you could relate to someone if you on this show. Paper, just, <laughs> if you've used paper. Just, just come on. Yeah. Come on. 
Oh my God. It's, it's just so good. Um, by far, just really quick, uh, let people know the very first season is a direct copy kind of, of the British version because the British version, um, was basically what started first and the Americans made a U.S. version of it. And the first season's kind of weird. Second season's awesome. Third season, it's like hitting its stride all the way in, until like, you know, the fifth or sixth season. There's nine seasons total, but the cast had some change-ups towards the end. And uh, if you get a chance to watch season five, the uh, two-part episode called Stress Relief, amazing. It's the fire episode. That's my Not favorite Ryan episode. started the fire. It's, it's, it my has to be. Favorite episode. Like, it's uh, amazing. Uh, 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 staying alive, staying, staying alive. alive. Yeah, if you've ever done a CPR class, you have to you have to check yes. that out. You can just you can just Google that on At YouTube. First I was afraid. I was so special. No, your patient's dead. All right, yeah, call patient. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um that one is yeah. just absolutely that's amazing. definitely a good one. Yeah. Um another one is called Dairy Girls, and it's actually set in Northern Ireland in the um like 1990s. So if you're nostalgic about the 90s or anything like that, you should do it. Also, I think this was, is a good one for people, especially women, like girls like that, if you are stuck at home, because they are literally like blockaded into Northern Ireland in the 90s because of what was going on politically and culturally. And uh, just like these people, like coming of age, like teenage stories, but it is spot on. The actors that they have playing in this, they're not that old, but oh my God, they're so funny. And the writing is very witty. It's some of the best writing I've probably you know, watched or heard or however you want to say that in a very long time. So, and they're only like 22 minutes a piece. So you can like get like a real quick blurb of sweet and, and funny too at the same time. Um, Marcella is the one I went to. I just labeled this as my dark one. Um, so if anyone has ever watched like Luther or anything like that, it is British. You do get like more of like the British feel for, um, crime drama. This one is also crime drama because she's hunting a serial killer who has reappeared after 11 years where they just disappeared. And she was a stay at home mom. Her marriage is falling apart. She has blackouts where she doesn't remember what's happened and where she, where she was and things like that. So it's, uh, it's truly dark. If you watch both seasons, which are worth it, by the way, the worst part is that it's only two seasons long. You will never see how the series ends. Like it is dramatic. Like when it happened and then, it, and then you're sitting there and I was just like, what the did I just watch? So amazing. If you like dark and you can't get, you love dark stuff, then definitely Marcella. Um, and my very last one, which is kind of like, I'm not going to say a whole lot about it. So it's a good one to end on. But In the Shadow of the Moon is a movie. It's about an hour, two hours long. It's an hour and 55 minutes. Uh, it's mind-bending. It's about a detective who is chasing a serial killer who reappears every nine years to kill again. Um, the film is mostly character-driven despite the content, and it plays very well as a strength for this. Um, it's just better to watch this one than for me to tell you too much because you don't want to know too much going in. So those are my tell recommendations me about this one? for Netflix. Have you in told me that about that? Moon? Yeah. I don't think so. Um, it does have some other elements. I don't really want to say anything. Okay, got it, got it. We'll talk about it later because I think there was something that you told me and there was something about a, or maybe it was a movie we talked about later, but we'll talk about it later. Okay. So is that it for you? That was my Netflix list. Yeah. So I'm going to start by talking about the, um, the Hulu one that I have. So the Hulu one that I have um, is Handmaid's Tale, hands down. So oh God. if anybody hasn't seen Handmaid's Tale, which I think Kate is probably 100% on board with having not seen it, yes, yeah. I recommend seeing it. Um, and I'm not going to tell too much also, but it's, it's, it's based on a book, and I yes. haven't read the book. Um, Kate, have you read the book? Um, the book club that I was in, we actually read it. So Gotcha. Yeah. So the book, um, it's based on like... Which I'm gonna tell you. So, from someone who's never seen the, who's never read the book, at first I thought that I thought it was like, oh, it's written in the past. But what was really scary about it is the more you watch it, you realize that it's it's pretty much like the future, and it's like this this way of the world, like um, getting rid of pollution, like mm -hmm. like changing the way that we reproduce, and it's like super scary. And the more you watch it, the realer, like, 
the more you're like, could this really happen? And like, it's just really good. And they're in a couple, they're only like a couple of seasons. The new season's getting ready to come out, but you can binge it on Hulu. Um, it's really, really good. Like, I can't stop, like, you can't stop watching it. And I am normally not a, I'm not a gory kind of like. No, person. you're not. Not at all. Like, I don't watch a lot of thrillers. Like, I don't do a lot of, like, even crime shows sometimes. I'm like, well, that's a little scary. Um, like, <laughs> like, you know, like, I can't do Locked Up Raw, but, like, this is, like, very, no, no, like, one. you're, like, on the edge of your seat, like, every episode. Like, you're just, like, what's about to happen. So I definitely recommend that. If you haven't seen it, you need to watch Amy still. Um, okay, so I didn't quite do it, kind of how Kate did it, so we'll just We'll just go with it that way. We're um, different people. I am, I'm definitely a list oriented. Yes. Person. So, yes. yeah, in your list, you're, like the way that you category it, category it? Categorize. She's drinking. It's okay. Yeah, I was going to say, you're drinking. It's fine. So, the shows that I've either binged or I'm currently binging um, on Netflix is how I kind of spaced it out. So, oh, Netflix or Hulu? Just Hulu was just that one? Hulu was just that one. So I don't know. It's and like my thing about my list too is that they're all free. I didn't list yeah. anything that if you subscribe to that service, then you should get it for free. Even for yeah. the Amazon Prime list that I kind of made. Yeah, like, that's how it is. So if you do get a chance to ever um, buy like the Showtime add-on for Hulu, there is a series called The Affair. It's so good. Like if you like drama, and like that one I told you about called Dr. Foster. Like, that was, like, the British version, and this is, like, the American version. Oh, my God, it's so, it's so good. It's basically about a man that has an affair, but you, you see it from, like, his perspective, his wife's perspective. You see the same events retold, and then you see it from his mistress. Like, so good. So good. Yeah. And it's the Showtime version Yeah, of... it's, like, the Showtime add-on of, um, I think it's Showtime. Um, anyway, gotcha. yeah, but the affair. You can just look it up. Yeah. Cool. All right. Sorry. So... The shows that I'm currently still watching, but I'm like, I'm into it. It's like a really good show that if you were going to put on TV, like I designated Survivor is really good. I'm currently watching it right now. Um, so it's pretty much about, um, he, I can't even remember what his job was because it was so not important. Um, but they pretty much. He was low. He was low yes. total. So when Congress has their meetings and when they do their State of the Union address, apparently, I don't know how true this is, but I'm guessing it is true. It makes sense, but nothing that makes sense is real in the real world anymore. Coronavirus. Um, so, so, so they leave him um, in a safe spot during this State of the Union address. So that way, if God forbid, if something were to happen to all of these people, he would then become president. So, uh, and it, that's what happens. Um, exactly. So this guy who has no political, well, he does. He is, he's like a pol political correspondent, I think he is. He doesn't really, he's not really involved in any decision making. Um, it's actually pretty good. And it's interesting because yesterday, the episode where they came up about a pandemic actually came up. Oh, great. And <laughs> it was like, oh, crap. Like, this is really happening. Like, how, like, the pharmaceutical companies and stuff were like they had the the answer but they didn't want to sell it and it was it was just it was absolutely crazy and I was like this could really be happening right now also um, is anyone else while you're binging like getting jealous when you see people like walking down the street and they're all just like well, let's go outside and I'm like, hanging out you're just like yeah I'm to do that all right yeah, it's just so yeah, so, yeah so definitely recommend designated survivor um love is blind so I am, again, Kate and I are, we are like the same person, but we're like different people. <laughs> if that makes any, oh, Maxie. So we are Sorry. like, Sorry. no, you're fine. He's all a bug. So he we are. Work. I think he's all a bug. I don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah. So Love is Blind, um, it's like, it's it puts me in the mind of like a um, lifetime, like, 50, first 50 day fiance, 90 day fiance um, kind of thing. So pretty much what happens is these people, they go into this pod. And um, this is also one that I watch because of memes, honestly, not gonna lie. Um, they go into good, these- There's some good ones, yeah. Yeah, they go into these pods and they don't get to see each other. They don't get to, they, they only get to date through like this wall. So they never see each other. They only hear each other's voices. Super crazy. They propose to each other from these pods. Then after they accept, they get to meet each other for the first time. Then they move in together. Then they date as they're planning their wedding. 
and then they get to decide at the altar if they're going to stay together or not. It's amazing. Like at first, I was like, I can't believe I'm still watching this, but How if would you, you compare that to like 90 Day Fiance and like all these other things, where like they don't meet and then like they show up and like they hang out and then. So I'm gonna tell you, I am addicted to Love at First Sight on Lifetime. Like I love that show. Like I love the idea. Like I, I love it. It's just amazing. But in comparison, I like the way that they do it better because okay. they actually get to date before they can decide. Love at first sight is literally you sit in a room, you, you answer <laughs> questions, you answer questions from other people, you do all of that. So in comparison, I kind of like the Love is Blind better. I just thought that Love is, Love is Blind had this like really funny, like, it was just, it was just amazing. Like you have to watch it. And if anybody has watched it, Jessica. Anyways, all right. <laughs> so, um, the other one, I love binge-worthy stuff. I don't like for things to end. I have very mm -hmm. bad, like, attachment to things, so I like to watch shows that have a lot of things there. Um, I started 13 Reasons Why. Now, it's not really on my list. Oh, okay. I don't, I, that one. I don't love it. It's like, I'm... Like, I'm on season, I think, three, and I'm still trying to figure out... Oh, wow, out. you went all the way. I stopped after season. Like, I got to, like, halfway I'm still, through season two and stop, so... Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm sluggishly moving along because I'm still trying to figure out why it's still going on like even though I'm attached to shows and I don't want them to end this is one that I feel could have ended a season ago yeah it's a good show don't get me wrong and it's definitely something to watch during all of this I just don't agree with it going on and on um by the way by the time that like I got halfway through season one like I didn't like Hannah I know that like I'm not in the right age demographic but like I couldn't even stand her I was like you don't like Hannah no. Which wait? No. I don't think Hannah did. I did not anything. like Hannah. She did not deserve. Okay, well we're not gonna tell the story. Anyways, um, we're not gonna tell the story, but like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it later. That's so um, stuff. one to put in the background. Again, my list is completely different from Kate's, but one to put in the background and just kind of like listen to and like laugh about. Um, is Shit's Creek. Okay. So I like to listen to Shit's Creek. I don't really like to watch it, but very much very similar to like the office there's a lot of like catchy like phrases or like things that you have to like you you kind of have to pay attention to it because it's witty it's not like the jokes aren't like the punchlines don't just come right out at you you kind of have to pay attention to it so it's pretty good Shit's creek is good so it's pretty much about this um family who were millionaires and they lost everything yep. and the only thing that they owned was as a joke the dad had purchased a town for the son and the name of the town was Schitt's Creek and he bought it to him. He gave it to him for a birthday gift one year and that was all they had. Uh, um, and they, that's where they went. Yeah. So um, that one's pretty good. Um, two more shows, um, Grace and Frankie. Oh, yes. Yes. That oh, good. is my yeah. show. That, so, that's great. Kate and I watch that all the time. <laughs> So, fun fact, my dogs watch TV. That's the thing. Oh, my so God, bark. they do. Yes. So, they bark at the TV every once in a while. So, there's probably something on the TV right now that he's barking at. Um, probably a dog. My favorite, though, is that your dogs like to watch Disney, because I know you love Disney, and they love Disney, and they're just like... Yeah, and like, right like now. And videos, and her dogs are, like, watching, like, The Lion King, and they're, like, holding up Simba, and... Also, you know, my mom, yeah. my mom keeps telling me that she wants grandchildren. But she's supposed to be watching the dogs right now and look at how that's going. Yeah, this is how it's going to go. Yeah, no. Okay, so um, Grace and Frankie pretty much is about these two women who their husbands are lawyers. They work together. And they, it, I just don't want to tell the story. I don't even want to tell the punchline. But they end up becoming, <laughs> Grace and Frankie end up becoming the best friends ever. They and they're do. like the modern day, like Thelma and Louise. They're like... Like, they're like a funny beaches. Like, Grace and Frankie is everything. Like, and it is so yeah. funny. And it is just amazing. Absolutely And the love two it. actors that play them, or that's why. Because the two the two ladies that actually do that, I mean, they're, you know. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. Um, okay, so then last binge-worthy show, um, Good Girls. Now, Good Girls is, at, so it's still on TV right now, but you can ke play catch up. And then um, the episodes are still going on. But by the time you get through this and watch all these other shows, it'll be on Netflix. That's right. um, hopefully we make it out of quarantine. So, oh um, 
<laughs> yeah, because now it's like August. Like, what, what, how are yeah. we supposed to write like this? Um, so Good Girls is about these, uh, it's about three wives. Well, they're not all wives. Two of them are wives. One of them they're is three moms. They're three, they're three moms. moms. That's that's yeah. the category I was looking for. Three moms um, who they just fall on hard times and yeah. they turn into they turn into robbers, drug dealers, money <laughs> launderers. It just it's it's amazing. It's a really good show, and I definitely recommend it. At okay, first, the trip it was to Mexico. Like, the trip to yeah. Mexico. Yeah. My favorite. I love yes, it. I totally was like yeah. really slow getting into it, but then I was like, oh, this is really good. So definitely recommend that. So oh, my, real quick, just, go ahead. Just, real, just real quick. So if you're going to watch that show, do not think that you're going to wait the whole season to see them rob a store or something like that. Like when they were like releasing it through um, like the trailers and like the previews and things like that. No, it, it just, bam. It happens. Yeah, immediately. Right. First episode. All right. So, um, <laughs> so documentaries. Um, this is how, so I did binge worthy documentary. All right. So documentary. Um, we already talked about Wild Wild Country. Yes. Um, the Mind of Aaron Hernandez. So I have a love-hate relationship with sports. Um, but if you're going to watch anything sports-related or you think you might want to know what happened to him, um, I definitely re recommend watching The Mind of Aaron Hernandez um, yeah, just because yeah. – that was a good, that was a good documentary. Um, it really went into just, like, a lot of documents and a lot of recordings that they had about his life. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, like, opened it up into a whole nother, a whole nother light of things. Because sometimes I think what we do is we see stuff in the news and we just go, ah, that football player, he hung himself the day after he went to jail for killing that person or whatever. And you don't really, like, understand it. So like to see that it was like this dude was crazy, but yeah, yeah. it's really good. No, definitely a good one. So the mind of of Aaron Hernandez, um, abducted in plain sight. I haven't seen this yet, so this is on my list to watch. Do you know what it's about? So I'm gonna tell you what I think it's about, and then okay. I'll tell you why I'm wrong. Okay. So it is about a family that has a daughter that knows a man somehow in like relationship. I don't know what it is like. And basically, he abducts their daughter yes. and, like, molests her in some way. But also, at some point, they get the daughter back, and then he molests her again in a different way or yes. something like that. Yes. So that's that exactly is my what full it is. understanding. That's of exactly it. what it is. And it's based on a true story. Yes. Yes. It's a full cool story. So. so it's definitely good. It's definitely that. This guy's the neighbor. He's the okay, neighbor. neighbor. Okay, okay. He's the neighbor. And also, it, like, teaches you, like, things like you want to be, like, first of all, what was wrong with her parents? Like, it just, it just, it so, just takes you through. So, like, all the memes basically were saying what you just said. They were just, like, there are so many flags. Like, what is wrong with these people? Like, well, I mean, like, I mean, I mean, they used to let this man who he told them, and oh, I don't want to give it away. It, it, it just, it's bad. The, like never in your life did your did your parents let you bring the never did your neighbor get to come over and go hey for my health reasons i need to sleep in the bed with your five-year-old daughter and your parents go no that would not have happened <laughs> that would definitely not have happened you're right so yeah <laughs> um abducted in plain sight um all right so then the last two are like super super I don't want to say dark because they're not, but they're like very, they're very emotional. Well, one of them's not so much. One of them's actually comical, but the other one is like very emotional. Um, oh when they okay. see us, that is like... when they see us is very, that's a yeah. good one. That is yeah. a really good documentary. Um, it is about the, dang it, I'm about to mess it up. What is it? What are they called? Oh my God. What are they called? This what is their name? Crap. Something five. The New York Five? Oh, yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, I know you're talking about. I can't remember. Yeah. Go look it up. Thank God for, thank God for Google. Um, they had a name, um, and I want to make sure I get it right because this is really important. They did. But um, okay. they were pretty much, it's Central Park Five. That's what it's called. The Central Park Five. So it's Central about Park these these five young men um, in Central Park, five New York, 
um, who were wrongfully um, convicted of a murder Absolutely. Um, yeah. when they were children. And it pretty much tells the story of like how they ended up getting convicted and all this stuff. It's, I mean, it's, it is gut wrenching and you watch it and you, you just, you just look at it and you're just like, Oh my gosh, I cannot even believe that it happened. This is, yeah. It's one of the reasons why they essentially started having where like you had to be of a certain age before you could like not have a lawyer. You had to have a lawyer yes. or your mom in the room as yes. far as that goes. And then just yes. like false confessions and yes. no evidence even. Yes. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Yes. And then like they, half of the boys weren't even there. One boy was yeah. at the park with his friend and he decided that he was going to, the police pulled them over and he decided he was going to go to the police station with his friend until his parents came with him. Mm -hmm. They arrested him. He was never even at the park. He had yeah. nothing to do with it. It was crazy. Um, and he ended up going to jail for the longest time because he was the oldest. So they tried him like an adult. Anyways, really sad, but it's definitely worth watching. Like it's okay. definitely worth watching to know what goes on in the world. Um, especially yeah. if you are sometimes a person who tends to not really understand things or sometimes you're a person who, who may have a strong opinion about some things. Sometimes it helps to get another opinion. So I yeah. definitely recommend watching it. Um, and then The People versus OJ. Okay. That, to me, was a good, that was a good docu-series, I guess is what they called it. Yeah, I guess that's a good um, one. Yeah, that was really good. Um, and if anybody knows who OJ Simpson is, and if you who don't know who OJ Simpson, Simpson is, you're too young for this, bro. Log off. Wait, you're too like young. Even bro. nowadays, though, he's back in the news. Like as soon as like everything else went down, like he's had he's been in and out of like the news for years now. Yeah, like, and he made a news. comment. And he made a comment about the Tiger King thing. Yes, he did. He weighed in on the controversy about Carol Baskins killing her <laughs> husband. <laughs> And, so, and, and it's like in the comments were like it takes one to know one like yeah everyone Every has like seen the meme and it's like finally an expert weighs in you know yes. like yeah i mean if oj simpson if you do not know was one of the very first trials where everyone in america had a television set people were putting them in their bathroom so they could like b take a bath and watch the trial we didn't have court tv and all these things and then after this trial we did so everyone also, was glued to their televisions also if the glove don't fit, you, you must, must quit. quit. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some saying there. Like, some people's careers were made. Some people's careers, um, was it Mark Furman? The, mm -hmm. um, the Kardashian. The Kardashian and... Um, yeah, the Kardashian. Who was his, father, uh, who was his was attorney? Their lawyer. Yeah, but who was the main attorney? Um, oh, Al... Al Sharp, Raveno. Raveno. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was huge. Like, and like I said, some people's careers went up, some people's careers went down, but yeah, it, that was a whole yep. deal. Oh In the gosh, Bronco. Yeah. Um, so oh, the, the chase, if you've ever seen a car chase, that's pretty much based on yeah. that. Yes. So, yeah. but, the, but it goes into, it pretty much goes into how corrupt our legal system is. Again, these two are really like one and the same. It goes into just how corrupt our legal system is and in how it pretty much goes into why they weren't able to convict him. Not that they weren't able, not that he didn't commit the crime, but why he was able to get away with it. Exactly. That's literally what the documentary goes into. So and that his, his, that the defense, that the, um, this, the attorneys for the state were just that bad. Like they just could not be. Right. The well, the burden, the burden is on the state to prove that you did something, to, to literally just prove like from nothing that you were in a place that you did something. That's why everyone says like, if you don't have a body, it's so much harder to prove, you know, different things like that. A couple of years ago, I was down in Florida and while I was there, I was watching court TV and we watched the whole case of Casey Anthony. That, okay, Kate, have we ever talked about this? I, I actually so. watched, I sure. watched it live every Me day. Too. Yeah, I was watching I it, watched live. it I was on live vacation. every yeah. day. Yeah. And it, it was just, again, like when, when her lawyer stood up, he didn't go into like, you know, anything about that. He's like, she killed her daughter. Okay. Her daughter is dead. We're going to tell you what happened. She did not murder her. It was an accident. She drowned in a pool and then everything else that followed. And it was just like, basically she got acquitted. She's gone. I mean, like she basically. That was know, the worst. That was the that absolute was the worst, worst thing. Because I mean, that like, was the was, worst for me. Like, I, and that's when I was like, again, I don't believe in it. The same with, um. 
what other trial did I watch? Um, yeah, nowadays you can watch Trayvon Martin. Oh God. Yeah, I think that was the last one that Nancy Grace did was his. Cause sorry, I just have to laugh about that. So yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe, believe. I love Nancy. Anyways, so yeah, so OJ versus People versus OJ, definitely a good one. All right, so something that I recently just saw that was newer, I didn't know these three. Um, these are like the movie ones that I have listed. Um, this is kid friendly, so you're welcome. Oh, okay, um, you finally but, a list of all these other things. Yeah, Space list. Jams is on Netflix now. <laughs> Michael Jordan and Space Jam. Space Jams is on um, Netflix now, so I definitely recommend that. Um, I remember watching it on VHS. Hell so yes. So oh this is like Bugs Bunny meets um, the NBA. Like that's yes. really how you can. That's how you phrase it. Um, yep. And aliens and aliens. Uh, and aliens. Good Burger is also on Netflix. I don't know. If th I think that's been there for a while. Yeah. Okay. Good okay. Burger is on there. Um, and then lastly, I saw that they added Purple Rain. Oh. Okay. So Purple Rain by Prince um, gotcha. is definitely on there. So those are like some of the good ones. Really, for me, mainly, like, through this time, I think that the best thing like, for a lot of people is, like, something that they can watch and, like, so I'm, like, all about the binge stuff here, um, but I am going to get into more of the documentaries. There are a lot of good documentaries on there. Yeah. You said there was the one. What was the one that you just watched about the drugs? Oh, um, that one is called How to Fix a Drug Scandal. Yeah, and it just it just released like last week, I think. Um, that one's phenomenal. As far as there's basically a drug lab in Massachusetts, and this it's like there's three workers. It's completely under you know funded as far as that goes, and they basically find out that the people who've been wrongly or I'm not gonna say wrongly convicted because we don't know they're wrongly convicted. People that have been convicted based off the evidence that this um, uh, drug lab, drug testing lab, have you know provided is completely in question uh you know basically it talks about the, the lawyer's perspective of this is, is definitely in play i think it's three or four episodes maybe it's longer maybe it might have been like six but anyway yeah. it's good no and that one is again like oh my god like basically i describe this as if there's a drug lab and the people that are there do the drugs that's how you explained it to me. Yeah, that's exactly That's how I explained it to you. I was like, if there was a drug lab that was supposed to test and provide, like, empirical data for lawyers and people who were doing the drugs. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So these are the shows that we definitely recommend you watch. Um, yes. We just thought it would be, like, good to come on and, like, kind of get some ideas. Um, as you can tell, we previously did not discuss these. So some of the ones that she suggested, I would definitely be watching. Um, because it also helps because you're just in the house. I mean, even if you're working from home or if you're not working, everybody pretty much has either Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or yeah. cable or something where they can try to find some of these shows. Um, and if not, I don't really know why you clicked on this. So. Yeah okay <laughs> well, well the one last thing is that i didn't go through my prime list i'll post it but i'm not gonna actually go through it right now but i will just tell you that there is one standout above everything else and you haven't watched this one yet and it is um uh phoebe downtown Wall abby no no no, no. Oh. phoebe wallbanger i think is her name and it is um uh fleabag the british one about the girl it's like that i think it's there's two seasons and um it's all the feels you know i'm not a feeler it's all the feels. You have to watch it. It is so funny. I also I love how we both. I also love how we both really didn't really cover any like romantic. I mean, if you okay, there's this thing called the Hallmark Channel. If you want to watch things like that, they are literally doing like all these other things. Like, they're also doing like Christmas people, movies right now, yeah, which I'm like, yeah. my mom like people who do Christmas in July, you're weird. Like, and you're also probably the person that complains about the seasons. You're like, it's hot, it's too hot in July, and it's too cold in January, but like, Christmas in July, like, that's lame. I feel like we're the people that we go to buy Halloween decorations, and we don't want to hear Christmas carols. Yeah, like... I feel like that's who we are. Right. And then, like, once Halloween is over, like, Thanksgiving is a holiday. No, it's not. They just skip it. It's like... No. Halloween, 
tomorrow's Christmas, and the day after that is like, you know. Yeah, and you know what okay. happened this year? This is completely sidetracked, but welcome to the podcast. Don't be extra. Yes. You got a pro- this, if you got a problem with this, with us being scatterbrained, this probably is not your podcast. <laughs> you probably don't want to listen here because we all are all over the place. All the um, but what I was going to say is I noticed this year when they started doing Christmas earlier, mm-hmm. I feel like people were over it. You were just over, oh. you were over, yeah. you were over the holiday. Like you just, it wasn't the same. You were just like completely over it. Like, cause you've been living it for like two months. Like you were like, dang, we still ain't Christmas. When is it? When is Christmas? Tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? I think it's no? exhausting just in general for most people. Yeah. Once you become an adult, like a fully yes. functioning adult and like yes. you have like your own family and your own house and everything like that, it does, it gets exhausting. Yeah, it's not and like don't give me- yeah, it's, it's don't get me special. wrong. I'm probably gonna be that crazy lady who's gonna like, like I think I want to decorate for every holiday. I do. Wait, wait. I have a picture of you and your husband and your dogs in matching pajamas. You knew I was going there, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> but just saying. But I just want to make sure that everybody is clear. That picture was taken on Christmas Eve. Or maybe a couple days before, maybe. Yeah, it wasn't like you snapped that pic, like, on October 30th. That's my point. Um, Also, we, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I think I want to be that crazy person that decorates, like, for every holiday. But I noticed there's a trend of people who, like, decorate, like, way too early. So, like, I don't want to be those crazy people. Like, people who decorated for Easter, like, weeks ago. Yes. And it's like, I'm over Easter now. So like, I know people who decorate for Christmas in like October, like well, before Halloween, like, like yeah. you, like, I don't, I don't even know how you even like. People are pushing the envelope on that. And a lot of times people are saying because they pay so much money and they take so much time and effort to put it up, they want to enjoy it longer. So yeah, just like in our house, like we would set up for Christmas and we had like the special room back in the day, young people, there was like a room that you could only use for the holidays and you put the tree up. And then when we had Easter and my mom needed to hide her Easter basket stuff, we would go take the tree down. It was a fake tree. It wasn't a lot tree, but yeah, that's like basically how we did things. Like as far as that goes, that was that room. It had like little doors, you know, everything like that. So yeah. But nowadays people are like, I want to enjoy all this and let's, well, and it's funny, and it's funny you say that because my mom still has one. So, like, when you come into the house, there's like two rooms. So, most people's houses are kind of set up this way now, like, or like older houses, kind of like in the '90s, early yeah. 2000s. Yeah, yeah. There was like two rooms, and people were like, "Oh, this is your dining room, and this is like whatever room," or you had it somewhere else in the house, mm-hmm. and it was just always like, "Oh, like, what do you do with this random room?" To this yeah. day, my mom still has a sitting room. Like, I wish that I could, like, pick my computer up and show you guys. She still has a sitting room. So, like, over there right now is, like, a couch, two end tables, a table. And it's, like, the room that, like, I've never been able to sit on that furniture. Like, and it is, it's a formal ever. sitting room for, like, when guests visit. Yes. Like, but who are these guests? That get to right. Sit on I mean, and it's, like, to the point that, like, I wish I could show you that. Like, it's just extravagant. Nobody goes over there. Oh, my God. Like, like the bathroom with, like, the guest towels that were, yes. that, had, oh my God. that are just, you're not supposed to use them. Oh, my God. What the point <laughs> the of this towel? Like, honestly. And, like, it's so crazy because, like, I remember, like, also my parents have had that furniture, like, forever. Like, like a long time but like I was never allowed to sit on it as I'm sitting in my mom's living room in this on this dining room table right now she's had the table for years and like she has plastic on it like that's how my mom like she's like you better not mess up anything I'm like dude why is there plastic on it this is crazy but <laughs> anyways yeah but that just made me think of like yeah the, the tree definitely went in the front room or it went in that little room yeah where it was off to itself. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's the whole thing. Yeah, Crazy. Like the holidays and, and different things Crazy. like that. So, but again, if you are a Hallmark movie lover, they have a whole There is a place for you in the world. There is. It just ain't this podcast. There's a place where you can watch things like that. And you know- It just ain't this podcast. All day long, all day long. It's just, it's just not this podcast. Yeah, because I don't want to watch it because I know how it's going to end. It's the same like, movie every day. All with different That's actors, fine. Fine. different characters. Yeah. Yeah. This is crazy. Oh, and especially the Christmas ones. 
She finds Santa. Like, how many people can fall in love with Santa? And how come Santa's not married in all of these stories? Like, yeah, where what, are happened Mrs. Claus? what happened to her? What happened to her? What happened to her? Maybe that's the story we should tell is a story of like the true crime. Like, yeah, or, <laughs> yeah, or the story of, or, or the story of Santa Claus out here shit spreading his joy with all these other people while <laughs> Mrs. Claus is back on the North Pole. That's the yeah. story you know about yeah, That's what he's really doing on Christmas Eve, you know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He got stops to make, all right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. so yeah, so we are officially like back in the swing thing Yay. here. Yeah. Um, so we will... we have time now, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Positive oh. outcome. Corona. Corona. Yeah. I'm sorry, and also COVID. we're not sick. COVID-19, um, COVID-19, so yeah, so we definitely, um, have a couple of other things in mind that we want to talk about for coronavirus, <laughs> yes, oh, 100%, that is definitely getting talked about, um, and then we may actually do a podcast just on how we feel about what's going on, I know I said the F word, but, um, not really what we feel, but what we think, in our opinion, we may do that. We may not. Um, it depends on how dark we want to get. Yeah. Because Kate and I have a tendency to like get super dark. So. To be real, but it's like let's have a real discussion about. Yes, this. yes, and we can. Um, that's something that we definitely can do. But of course, anything that we talk about, we are not scientists. We're not politicians. We are not any of those people. We are regular people like you. Listen Full disclaimer to this. is basically this is not for any instructional, educational, or yes. otherwise. Also, purposes. this yeah. is not sponsored by Hulu, Netflix, none of those people. Now, if they want to sponsor us in the future, Heck that's yeah. up. That's right. Funny. But right now, this ain't sponsored. These are just our own opinions on what we think. Um, and yeah, so we'll probably do that. And it'll give us something to do, as well as give you guys something to listen to and give you guys some ideas of how to stay sane during um coronavirus yes so. seriously yeah because we could so, it's not going to end anytime soon so yeah apparently not nobody knows which is also odd but you have an idea of how many people have to die before this is over like i don't know like i that's why i'm like we gotta die it's, yeah it's it's crazy it's it's like these things don't go together but yeah, yeah. one of these things is not like the other yeah. yes all right but yeah we will definitely um Stay tuned and um, get you guys the next video. Absolutely. All righty.